Okay, hi folks. Uh, another edition of WordPress. Um, <laughs> we have a question from uh, Debbie on um, renaming uh, URLs. And so, um, Debbie, can you um, can you share your screen with us? And yeah. we'll take a look and see if we can figure out how to show you to rename it. The new editor may be different than the old one, so I've got to take a look at it. Well, I am using the classic editor. I, I okay. installed that and I'm using it. Oh, well, let's take a look at that too. Okay, so um, can, you, um, can you share? Ah, there we go. All righty. All right, and I was, okay, so, so I say I want to look at one of the pages. And it has permalink up here, which I guess means the URL. Does that mean the URL? Mm -hmm, that does. Okay. But wait, 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 wait. Do you see the button next to it? What happens if you click on change permalink? I tried that and I didn't understand what Let's it is. Let's take a look. It's, so it opens up this separate window. Oh, I don't see a separate window opening up. Well, it's in front of the other one. Okay. Um, so this is what happens when I... This is what happens. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't sure what to do. I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the other window yet. Oh, is this the window that it opened? No. Okay, look, can you see what, what it says edit page, it says animals, and then it's the, um, well, it's in the text part, not the visual. I could change mm -hmm. it to visual. Yeah, change it to visual. Matter there, but uh, right up here where it says permalink, it says right. change permalinks. Mm -hmm. So I clicked on change permalinks, and it opens a new window in front of it. Maybe I just have my browser set up. Oh, I way. can't see the uh, other window. We can't see it. Can you see a window right in front of it that says permalink settings, common settings, plain? No. Do you do you folks see that? I don't see it. Oh, no, I don't. No, see it. it might be a pop up. Maybe you could alt tab to it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, we don't get that. I wonder if that's a function of the sharing feature of this. Uh, what if you move the other window down? What if you move the main window down? It says sharing is pause. Bring your shared window to the front. Oh, okay, there you go. So bring the other window to the front. So this is the one where it says common settings. We still don't see, we don't, we still don't it. see it. You know, that's so weird. I'm, yeah, this is a, yeah, well, this Zoom it interface is kind of new for some of us. Um, you hit the reduce button on the, um, the browser window so that it's, it's smaller on your whole total screen. Because well, maybe I, I can know. show both. Wait a yeah, second. Try to show both windows. Oh, weird. It still doesn't. We're still not seeing it. Um, you know, Debbie, in your Zoom setting, when you share the screen, there's several different setting choices, and maybe you picked uh, the wrong one. Yeah, you need to click, click desktop, camera. not window. So um, why don't you stop sharing, and then go back into sharing and click on desktop. Um, it's one of the first um, options when you share your screen. Because I think you're sharing just a window instead of your whole desktop. I, that might be what's going on. Huh. Yeah, share try that screen. again. Share screen. No, no, share desktop. I'm looking for that. Oh, it just says portion of screen. Mm. Don't want that. You, it should say, it should, should give you an option to share your desktop. I don't see that. Hmm. Oh, well, um, I don't yeah, know. I have a, because I'm hosting, I'd see different options when I share mine. Do you folks, when you share your, your screen, do you Wait, see Let me options? see what happens if I close the other one. Maybe if I close the other one. Okay, give that a try. You see a screen now? Do you see a, um, something now? No, you're not sharing yet. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, we see see wow, that's really weird. It only shows 
something right in the middle. Well, I've got, I've dragged this thing, this page into the area where it's showing that it's sharing. Right. Do you see, uh, uh -huh. does it say permalink settings? Yeah. Right. So what you want to do, okay, so you see where it says plain and underneath it says, it says um, day and name and then underneath it says month and name? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you look at the, um, or you see post name is probably the one you want. Um, but you see that whether it's post name or day and name or month and name, it all ends with the actual title of the particular page, which in this case is called sample dash post. Do you see that? Yeah, actually the, for the page that I was looking at, it might be custom structure that I want. Well, you could, then you could, then you'd have to actually give it a custom name, but I would say the easiest thing to do is do post name or month or date name because it will take the name of the title. And then when you title it, you just title it knowing that that will be the, um, the, the, in the URL. Um, to me, that might make the most sense for you. Okay. Because then when you rename it from sample post, it'll take that name. But here's the thing. Um, when you do this, you have to um, you have to give thought to the name that you want the, it to show up in the URL when you title the page. Right. Well, I'm not really getting that at all. It seems like if I click <clears throat> now, it's doing now the sharing thing is doing something weird. Try, I would try post name. Try that. Obviously, you can change this. Try that and see if that works for you. Uh, okay. And then go back to the page and change its... Um, well, actually, um, let's see. You've made that change retroactively after you've created the page, so it's not going well. I'm not sure now. Um, every it new might page. Make more sense for me to say custom structure and then type in the type in the name, the actual title. No, 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 no. This is that's going to be a global change. Oh. Um, no, no. You don't want to do that. Don't read it. Yeah. See where well, it has post name. What if it's a static page? Right? Okay, so, so here, let me show you how custom structure works. If you click on that again. Um, now, you see where it says slash percent post name percent slash? Yeah. What it's showing you there is the structure would be um, just the post name and nothing else in the URL. Now, you can add to that. So you can type... Um, before the slash, you should be able to put something before the slash if you want, but that would be global. The post name would simply take the name of the post, like sample dash post. But you don't need to, I mean, in this case, it doesn't matter because you're on a designcruise.com slash Debbie. But yeah. if you were on your own domain name, you could simply have your own domain name slash post name. You see, it would make sense to do that, perhaps. You have to make sure that everything you name will have a unique name um, if you do it that way. I think the easiest way for you to do it is with um, post name and not common custom structure changing because that'll all be slash Debbie slash whatever the name of the page is, the title tag of the page. All right, well, I'll try this because I can't look at the other page while I'm in here. Yeah. Sure, just try that. I think that that will be what you want. And I, let me explain for those who don't know any coding that in HTML, um, the title is a very important aspect of a page. Debbie, can you go back to uh, just a page, any page in the edit box? Um, Save your change and then um, get out of that and go back to a regular page. Yeah. It's not letting me, oh. <clears throat> All right, well, here's one of the pages. 
Okay. Oh, okay. It's showing up now. In permalink, it's showing up the, the name that I want. Exactly. Exactly. And it's animals, right? So um, yeah. can you make your screen? I can't see the whole window. Um, can you kind of... I don't know why it's not letting me... It's okay. I can, um, I can see I can enough. This area that I'm so, so, bigger. I don't know why so now you see where it says under edit page, it says animals in the box, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what shows up as part of your URL now. Right. Now, that is what we call um, a title, okay? Uh, and in, those of you who have HTML understand the difference between a title and a headline. Um, and the title is not necessarily what shows up on the page. When you make a headline, that shows up on the page. And frequently your headline would be the same as your title, but they're actually two different things. They function in two different ways. The title is what shows up in the tab of the browser window or the, um, or, or the, the title bar of the browser window when looking at that page, number one. Number two, the title is what shows up when somebody bookmarks your page. So if somebody, if somebody bookmarks this page, they will see um, animals right. in their bookmark list, right. not whatever the old permalink was that WordPress gave it, which is probably what you want. Um, and also the title is um, used by search engines as the number one factor uh, for keyword searches. So um, when you name your page titles, um, they should be brief, but also somewhat descriptive. Um, and if you care about search engine optimization, the naming of your titles of your pages is key because that whatever text is in the title, in this case, animals, well, that's pretty broad, so it won't matter much, but whatever text is the title of your page will be um, focused on in terms of keyword searching. Um, in terms of how the uh, search engine logic works. It's the most important of all the uh, things you can do to optimize your page is the naming of your title. Um, second, perhaps only to the naming of your most important headline, your H1. So, um, so I think that this will work for you. Um, okay. Give that a try. I'm pretty sure that that, what that means is that you just have to give your titles um, the proper weight. I mean, in terms of when you're thinking about how to name a page. Okay. All right. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, so you can unshare now. Right. If you wish. Um, and uh, let's take uh, more general questions. Yeah, I have a more general question. Okay. Shoot. Let's um, solve it. Since I'm a newbie to this, I'm, I, I'm, I have a question about strategy okay. in terms of themes and sites, mm. pages and posts. I've been trying out different ones and I'm toggling between customize and menus going back and forth between those two. And I don't know if that's, it seems to be working for me, but is that kind of the strategy for this particular? Um, when you program? say, toggling between um can you explain a little more i think i know what you're talking well, about but i just want to make sure i I'm, get yeah i'm using the menus for helping with placement of things and mm -hmm. objects and i'm yeah. using customized to tune what the theme has to offer right and that, that that's correct that's what you would do um now different themes are going to give you different options for what are called widgets um do. <laughs> yeah um, widgets are kind of like plugins. They're more specifically, they function as defining a, an, a geographic area of the screen real estate for whatever object you want to put there, whether it's a menu or a calendar or a box with a Twitter feed or whatever. So they're kind of like plugins, but more specifically, um, they give you, in a sense, layout options. Like, so a widget might be, okay, I have this calendar widget and I'm going to stick it in the upper right-hand corner or I have this other widget and I'm going to stick it at the bottom of the page. So widgets, um, don't be confused by the term, they're kind of just plugins that have a certain function. Um, and so many of the themes give you options for things like how the menuing works and that may give you a widget or more than one widget. Maybe you have a main navigation and a sub-navigation. Um, 
And then within those widgets, that's how you edit the menu, for example, for a given theme. So um, what you're really doing is you're customizing the theme, but then you're going further and you're saying, okay, within that area of the theme, I'm going to customize it further and do blah, blah, blah. So what you're doing is entirely right. I mean, you know, you, you've kind of, you've kind of um, figured it out by playing with it. Any problem with toggling between themes after you've started creating a site? Um, you mean changing themes? Changing themes. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, I haven't found it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a really good, okay, yeah. So there are lots of factors. So basically, um, the more that you customize a theme, the more you will have issues later on down the road when you try to change it to another theme. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to have problems. But what usually happens is this. Themes come, number one, they come with some default. Um, they, they may come with a couple of default plugins or widgets that allow you to customize the menu or customize different parts of that theme. And that's all the way it works, right? But then um, let's say you start installing plugins. Now, the plugins you install may work really well with the theme that you currently have installed. Mm -hmm. If it didn't, you probably would have discarded that plugin and tried another one because you might have said, ah, oh, that plugin doesn't really work well with that theme at all, or maybe it didn't function, or maybe it functioned, but it didn't look the way you wanted, whatever. So over time, what happens is um, before you know it, you've really put a lot of plugins on it. <laughs> you know, you got five, 10, you got 15 plugins, all of a sudden you got plugins for everything. It's like, oh, you're going overboard with the plugins, whatever. Which doesn't hurt too much until you go to change your theme. And you go, you know what, I'm gonna try this different theme. Now, some of the plugins that you installed previously that worked fine with the previous theme, they might not work so well with the new theme, or they simply might be irrelevant because maybe the new theme incorporated some other functionality that you had to use a plugin for in the previous theme, or maybe vice versa. Um, so what happens is the more you customize the theme, and that's usually, when I say customize, we're talking generally about adding more plugins, but also um, just with your, a lot of themes give you the ability to change colors and sizes of things and typefaces and so forth. Every theme is different, but the more you customize it, and then when you go to shift to another theme, um, you're kind of resetting everything, but your plugins are still there and you may have to disable some plugins or change some plugins to work more appropriately with the new theme. So when you just have a generic theme and you haven't really customized the page, you haven't done a lot of plugins, you know, whatever, not a big deal. You could probably change themes to your blue in the face, trying different themes. But as you add plugins, um, then you might run into issues. Now, generally speaking, you won't have too much trouble. And maybe you'll have maybe you'll have a dozen plugins, and maybe one or two of them will be like, nah, not 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 happening, guy. Get rid of this plugin. <laughs> it just might not work, or it might say this plugin's not um, compatible. Um, but generally speaking, until you've really, really started to dig into the plugin changes and and customizing the theme, you won't have too much trouble changing themes. But Every theme is different. So some themes will focus on certain things like there'll be um, themes for um, artists' uh, portfolios. And so they come with galleries built in, in the form of a plugin or a widget. Um, and then you go to change to some other theme and that functionality is not there. So now the gallery that you spent a lot of time on in the previous theme, all of a sudden, like, you have to rebuild in a new theme. So you see what I mean? So it really mostly depends on the customization, which mostly depends on the plugins and how much you've gotten into that. So the way to answer our question is the more you customize, the more issues you run into when you change themes. The less you customize, the easier it is to just change one theme to another. Right. It's the short answer. <laughs> Thank you. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Um, that's why I, I think it's a good idea to spend a lot of time up front looking at different themes, looking at the functionality built into the themes, um, and um, before settling on a theme. Um, and because so there are so many themes, and because there are so many fo focuses, uh, fo foci <laughs> of the themes, 
uh, like I said, there are themes for like, you know, you're hosting your own pirate radio show themes. You're hosting your own uh, podcast themes. You, you have an artist portfolio theme, themes on, um, you know, personal journaling, themes on, um, you know, dentist offices. I mean, there are so many specific themes, themes for realtors. There's hundreds of themes for realtors, right? So um, it's, it makes a lot of sense to really go through theme choosing um, a lot more time, spend a lot more time up front on getting close to the theme look that you want. What, what happens over and over again, happens to me, happens to everybody, is you pick a theme, you kind of like it, and you start to kind of build on it, and then you realize, you know, the theme does 80% of what I want, but the other 20% I have to add on. And you know, like if I spend a little more time finding a theme that did 90% of what I wanted, I'd be in a lot better shape. Um, and a lot of times people, they, they standardize on a theme and then later on they realize, I want to change the way it looks. I want to change, um, oh, sorry, let me turn this off. Um, they, uh, they spend a lot of time trying to shoehorn what they want into a theme that wasn't really meant for that in the first place. And you can do that, but it's more work. Sometimes you can't do it, but sometimes you can do it with plugins. So the, the, the takeaway from this long blothering of, that I'm saying is spend more time getting a theme that works for you and then customize it rather than finding a theme that kind of works and then customizing it. Um, it it's just a, an efficiency metric. The more time you spend on getting the proper theme that's closest to what you want from the beginning, the better. Like lots of, lots of themes have some huge giant image that takes up the whole top half of the screen and then some three columns at the bottom or whatever. And you may be like, yeah, I don't really like that, but I'll, I'll figure out how to change that later. It's like, no, no, no. If that's the basic layout of the theme, that's the basic layout of the theme. And it's a lot easier to go find another theme that doesn't have that if you don't want the giant image on the top or whatever. So that's the takeaway. That's a really good question. Is that helpful? Helpful answer? Okay. Um, that was a good, really, these are really great questions. Um, so we had the, the, the permalink question, we had the, the uh, customization and theme question. What other questions do you have in general or specific at this point? Okay, hearing no further questions. I had a question about you in users, but I don't know if you were getting to that anyway, so I was let's, gonna we're, wait. We're gonna get to that right now. Yeah, well, let's talk about users and, and permissions. So um, I am going to, um, let's see what we can do here. Share screen. Now when I go to share my screen, I, I see an option that says desktop one, which I'm clicking on. Yeah, I didn't get that, but I changed something in, in preferences and we'll see what happens if I share again. <laughs> okay, so um, in, in, in this, uh, WordPress exercise three, which is focusing on users and permissions, let me click on this link I give you at the top, um, which is a WordPress uh, article on how um, the different permission settings work. So one of the beauties of WordPress as a content management system is that you can define different users with different permissions to have different, uh, different abilities to create or edit or um, uh, modify pages or not. And so, um, oh, did they change this link? This doesn't look right. Uh-oh. I think they changed my link. It worked yesterday. This doesn't look, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's just, it's just loading slowly. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, um, so what, users, uh, what users are, they fall into these categories of administrator, editor, author, contributor, subscriber, adding users, and, uh, well, actually, no, that's changing rules. So administrator, editor, author, contributor, and subscriber. Administrator having the most privileges, and you all are administrators of your site currently, down to subscriber, which is somebody can view things and they can't really do much else. So um, the great thing about WordPress is that when you're working as part of a team, you can have different permissions for different people who are editing different sections of the site, perhaps. Um, or creating content or just editing content that's already been created and so forth. So, uh, okay, um, I forgot to turn off my phone. Excuse me for just a second. Hi, I'll have to call you back. 
<laughs> uh, no, if you could um, leave, if you could call back. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just in the middle of a recording. Sorry. Yeah, what's your number? I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so the um, the permissions also um, uh, apply to people who um, are posting comments to your site if you choose to let them. And so that makes this uh, more important. Obviously, we're talking about what are called the post pages or blog pages, not the static pages or pages that WordPress talks about. Again, you have the two kinds of, of pages, what WordPress calls pages and posts. And pages are static, and you can't have user comments on pages. Posts are dynamic. They can be if you choose to let people post comments to your page, which opens up a whole host of issues, which some people don't even want to get into. For some people, the reason they really like using WordPress is because they have the ability to allow people who are reading their uh, content to post comments. Um, and some people don't really care about that feature at all. So, um, so the first thing I ask you to do is look at these um, permission groups. And, um, and we've got um, four roles you can assign to people, administrator, editor, author, and contributor. And these are people that you want to also be um, working on the content with you, okay? Um, unlike subscriber, which is not somebody you're going to allow to change any content on your page. So um, this, this tells you basically what these people can do. Um, and it tells you how to add users. So one of the things that, um, that I want you to understand how to do is to deal with adding new users and giving them certain permissions. And so the exercise I'm asking you to do, which is here, um, can you see that? Am I sharing properly? Yes. Yep. Okay, I want you to add, we're gonna go through this. I want you to add me as a user to your WordPress site. Um, I know that a couple of you, when, let's see, one of you, I think, Debbie, did you have already, some of you already done this. I don't know if Debbie I did. did. Yeah, I did, I did it already. I think it was Debbie, because I get an email. Um, so what happens is, you're going to add me as a user. Um, you can give me any password you want. Um, and you're gonna check the box that says, send the new user an email about their account. And you're just gonna give me a role of subscriber. So I'm not gonna be able to do much damage to your site, not that I would. Um, and then you've given me the ability to add a comment to one of your pages. Uh, and then I will do so. And um, that, that is a simple exercise that I want to go through right now. So do we all understand what we're talking about so far? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So going back to this WordPress page that talks about how to add a user. Um, I am going to, let's see, open up a new window. What am I in? Oh, I'm in Chrome. Okay. And um, hello. wait for the page to load. Um, oh, no, I don't want to go here. I want to go to um, design crew. Sorry. Slash John. And oh, let's try that one again. I thought I had published this, I guess not. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this should put me in my dashboard. Okay, I'm in my dashboard. All right, now, um, See here where it says adding users? Mm -hmm. Okay, so down here, 
in my dashboard, I see um, in the main dashboard menu, you should see users. If you don't see users, you're not in your main dashboard menu. And again, it's the dashboard is always a good place to start from. And so um, you always want to start, uh, you know, from your main dashboard if you can't remember how to get there. There are a couple ways to get there, but I just went to the site. Um, and then dashboard because if you're in somewhere else in your dashboard and you're like how do I get to the main one you can do it that way um, but if you see users you're there now all users add new your profile so let's look at all users first since um, there shouldn't really be a lot of users since I just created this site and here's the window that shows me all the users and yours will look something like this it will say you have one user that's you it will say that you're the administrator um, and unless you've already done this there are no other users and um, that was the email address I used when I created my account. Now, by the way, when I created your accounts, I did not put your email addresses in because um, I created each one individually and it just that would have been kind of crazy. But when you look at yours, you should be able to add an email address for yourself. Um, That's what I wanted to know about. Pardon me? Yeah, I wanted to know about that, whether to change that. Yes. Because, um, because mine says, it says Debbie, and then it says for email, it says the same email. It says orders at, at Earth. Yeah, because I created them all with, using my, my own administrator email okay. when I set up this. So um, what you want to do is go in there and change it. You can do that under your profile. You see this here where it says your profile? Actually, this is a good thing to do first. This isn't uh, part of the exercise, but you may wish to change some things about your profile. Um, specifically, um, you may wish to make your own email address appear there. Now, what happens, this is not something that's visible to the public, number one, unless you choose to make it so. But this email address of you as the administrator, um, it's, it's a good idea to have your own email address in there for a couple reasons. Number one, if you forget your password and you say, I forgot my password, WordPress, to get into your dashboard, it's going to email you a password reset link and guess where that's going to get emailed to? Whatever address is in here. So when you forget your password, um, I, don't need to, I don't need to reset it because you can reset it yourself by putting your own email address in there. Now, not that you're going to forget your password or anything, right? We don't do that, right? Nobody ever forgets their password, right? Okay, that was a joke. Never mind. Not very funny. All right. But anyway, that's the main reason. But um, lots of times... Um, uh, a plugin will use that address to send a piece of email to you when something happens based on the functionality of that plugin. Um, if there's a problem with your WordPress site, you might get an email from WordPress itself saying you've got a plugin that's misbehaving um, and so forth. So first thing, you might as well just go in there and put your own email address in there and any other information you want to put about yourself. Okay. Um, so going back to, is that any questions on, on the administrator email address? Okay. Um, so going back to users, um, I'll go back to all users and, um, you can see that I am an administrator. I've posted once, um, and I can, uh, I can look at, I can edit my settings. I can, I can view my settings. If I go to edit, I can change things like what kind of um, permission um, that I should have. Uh, actually, I really can't change this one because I have to have an administrator account. And because I am um, the, only, the only user, um, I have to be an administrator. But you can, when you add users, let's talk about adding users now. When you add users, you can also add a user as another administrator. Um, you can give people um, a lot of permission to mess up your site. <laughs> Whoa. So if you're just one person and you are creating all your content, you don't have any other co-authors or people that you're working with, then you don't have to think too much about this. But if you want to give other people permission to create their own blog pages or add to your pages or edit pages um, or create new pages, whether they're blog pages or pages pages, um, you can do that. And so understanding how permissions works is kind of important. Again, this document here, 
Okay, what's the command in Chrome? There we go. It was working. It just was such a delay. Okay, I just want to make it big. Um, so again, this explains, okay, so administrator can do everything. Nothing is off limits. Um, so you generally don't want to create another administrator on your account unless it's completely trustworthy, a completely trustworthy person that you need to give that much permission to. Um, here's what Here's what happens a lot of times. Um, you are a web designer and you're working for a client and you're setting up a WordPress site for a client. So then the decision you have to make is, okay, I'm going to set up my client so my client can manage their site. How much permission do I give the client? Do I give them full, complete access or do I be the administrator of the account and give them slightly less access? Or do I give myself and the client both administrator access? Or, am I, or is this a one-off? Am I designing the site and turning it off to them, turning it over to them, and I'm done? And they're not paying me anymore, and so I'm going to make them the administrator, and then I take myself off of it, right? So, or they would have to take me off of it because now they're the administrator, they can delete your account. So um, this is where this generally comes into play. Or you work in a company, a corporation, which you have a team of people working on the web and they all have slightly different permissions based on their role in that company. Maybe the marketing department can edit marketing pages and so forth. So, um, so the permissions and users aspects of this is, is kind of important. Um, and the administrator, of course, can do everything. By the way, um, uh, the administrator can add plugins, which is important, change themes, okay? Um, an editor can edit content, can delete and create content, but they can't do the function the administrator can do in terms of um, uh, customizing the theme, adding plugins, okay? Author is kind of like a minor editor. They can edit their own stuff, but they can't edit other people's stuff. So um, they, can, um, they can create things and edit them, but they cannot mess up, they cannot mess with or edit or change anything that they haven't themselves written, okay? Uh, a, a contributor can edit their posts, but can't publish them, right? So um, an author can basically do that, but publish the posts. But a contributor has to be pre-approved. You know, they can write something, but then somebody, um, need, like an administrator, needs to go in and say, okay, I will make this page active and visible to the world. So a contributor is somebody who you might trust a bit, but not completely, to create content because you want to double check it first before it gets on the site. Okay, so that's, these are the, the levels that you, can, um, that you can set. And the subscriber has the lowest. Um, you basically have to okay them uh, as a subscriber so that they can post comments to your page if you choose to have your comments not open to the world. Um, you can choose to have comments open to the world, which is a really bad choice because you're opening your page up to spammers and hackers and uh, uh, scammers, spammers, scammers, and hackers. Um, so while many years ago people used to do that, they say, hey, anybody can edit this page, anybody can post a comment, um, that has not become the norm anymore because so many, um, there's so many script kiddies out there, uh, you know, teenagers from Eastern Europe, um, you know, your own neighbors, um, and hackers all over the world, I mean, you know, they're all looking for places where they can post uh, links to sell products, um, pornography, spam, whatever. And you really don't want to open your site up to anything like that. So um, if you have a site where you want people to be able to post comments, but you want to have control over who can do that, you can only let subscribers post comments. And then you can check the person out um, before you give them permission to post comments. Um, so, um, in other words, they have to register with you and give them, you, you, they have to give you their information before you even let them uh, be someone who's able to post comments to your pages. Um, so that's just a, 
how these settings work. Any questions on that so far? So, uh, Debbie. Yeah, so if somebody's going to register with you so they're allowed to post comments, you, um, they, um, does it send, does something send you an email? Uh-huh, yes, exactly. So, um, what, um, let's see, um, let me, let's do this. Um, I'm going to add a new, actually, before I do that, let me go to a post. I'm going to go to a post page. And, um, okay, let's see what we got here. Is this Hello World a post page? Let's take a look at it. Oh, there's really nothing on this page, is there? Hmm. Oh. Okay. Um, post, though. If you, um, Debbie, do you have a, a page with a post on it right now? Or somebody else? Yeah, I do. I do. All right, here, let's try something. All right, oh, I'm typing too fast. Oh, Las, oh boy, you know Las Vegas is in a lot of economic trouble right now. They're one of the hardest hit cities in the whole I'm country. Sure they because, are. because so many people are involved in um, entertainment. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, Thoughts blog. That looks yep. like a post page that to me. Post page. All right. Leave a comment. Hmm. Uh, what happens if I try to leave a comment? Let's just see what happens. Let's see how open your site is. This is a test. Name required. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, your website. And, no. Now, see where it says post comment? Yeah, but I already put you in there as a subscriber. Oh, okay. Well, tell you what. And I'll use my orders email. Orders at earthdance.com. You didn't put orders in there as a, a wait. That yet? Did you change your administrator address already? No, I didn't. Okay, because it might say orders. I'll try something. I have lots of email addresses. Let's try John at thecomicnews.com. I need something that you don't already have in your system so that right. it doesn't seem to. And I say post comment. Now, what's it going to tell me? Watch. Locked as suspected bot. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Okay, that's not what I expected to have happen. Um, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> well, my comicnews.com domain is obviously listed in some uh, database used by WordPress as a spammer. Wow, okay. Um, let's try something else. How about uh, test it, Teacher John? Okay, I'll have to look into that. That okay. So that was not what I expected. Okay. Did you install any kind of security plugins? Let's see. No, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, I've come up with another. I, email no, there's address. something in there, but I don't think it's active. I don't know if it's activated. I can take a look. <laughs> I'll use my uh, Cabrillo um, address. Um, I have ask him met. I have ant ask him met anti spam. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, and that's that's using the yeah, database. Yeah, okay. No, so yeah, that's, 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 that's a basic. That's, standard. That was. I think that was activated. You Cabrillo wrong. Oh, is that why? Oh, thank you. Because I was going to say Cabrillo shouldn't be listed as a Cabrillo. Uh, no, it is. A, yeah, I think I did activate it recently. Yeah, and that's what, and now you can see what it's doing. Um, yep. Wow. Um, I spelled it Cabrillo wrong. Did I spell Cabrillo wrong again? Cab no. Is that right? Um, your security settings are extremely high. Let me put it that way. 
Should um, I should I should I deactivate that and just see and then and then say actually, you know what this is a really good this is a really good example of um, looking at how that plugin works. Why don't you deactivate it? Okay. And um, I'll give you a minute to do that. Um, but generally speaking, what it should tell me, <laughs> if Debbie settings are what I think they are, what it should say is not blocked. It should say um, your comment's going to be reviewed before it's published. That was what I was hoping this was going to show you all. Um, all right, I, I think, yeah, I deactivated it for now. Okay, I'm not sure I need to reload the page or not, but I'm going to reload the page. And hi there. Let's just take that in. Oh, it really doesn't. Uh, it wants to type automatically. Okay. So what it should tell me, wow. Um, I have no idea why it thinks I'm a bot. Did you install any other security plugins by any small chance? I'm looking to see. Uh, no. Well, Cabrillo shouldn't be coming up as a suspected bot. Um, Try it again. Hmm. I just made okay. sure that I applied the DM. Why don't you try one of our other sites? Yeah, let's try. Um, um, okay, Ann, let's try your site. I haven't loaded <laughs> any any plugins other than galleries. Yeah, I just. Hmm. Wait, it's a capital A. All right. Um, Let's see. Uh, do you have a page that's a, a post page? Yeah, either the cut circles or the 2D universe. And, and I did make you a user, so. Oh, look, it took Joe Blow. Um, <laughs> is Cabrillo spelled right this time? Okay. I'm waiting. All right. So this is the behavior I thought I was going to see. <laughs> this is what usually happens. Um, and so, um, so Debbie, take a look at any plugins that you have installed um, and maybe do a little trial and error in terms of disabling them and then trying to do a post as somebody else on one of your pages. Okay. Um, there's some kind of security setting on yours, and my guess is it's a plugin, but I don't know for sure. Um, but that's another thing we can look at later. But, but right now, this is, this is the normal thing that would happen by default. Your comment is awaiting moderation. This is a preview. Your comment will be visible after it's been approved. Now, Anne, I forgot to ask you, did you already change your administrator email address? Uh, yes, I just did. Oh, you just did now? Uh-huh. Before I posted or after I posted? Before you posted. Oh, good. Okay, so now you should have a message in your email that basically says somebody's trying to post to your page. Here's a link and you click on it and then you can enable it. Let me just go check. Because right now I'm going to go back. I have two computers. So, um, oh, oh, here, yeah. email, email request chain. Oh, I just got the email request. Chain. Right. So, so tell, tell everybody what that email looks like. Actually, Anne, why don't you share no, your I just screen got a now? Request. I just uh, it just says that I requested a change in my email address. So I haven't gotten. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So you know what that means? That means that my comment went to orders at earthdance.com. Okay. Which is my own email address rather so than yours. It. So try it because I just got the, the request, the email request change notification. 
Oh, I, I have to um, do something to make to actually approve that request. So it's not approved yet. So try your your. Um, Okay, well, you know what? Um, it's okay. We, I, I want. I basically, I just wanted to show you guys how the process works. So, how the process normally works email. is go into your email. It should be there. Yeah, here we go into my email. Um, but that is why it's important. Number one, to change your administrator email address so that this, um, so that this will um, work. Otherwise, I will approve my, <laughs> I'll approve my own post for the purpose of the exercise, which will work okay. But I'd rather you see the email. Um, but what happens is this. But these are and these are default settings again, and this is the kind of stuff you can change with the permissions and the users. So by default, WordPress doesn't start out open; it starts out closed, and nobody can post a comment to your page unless you OK it. So that's the default before you make any changes, which is a good default, right? So right now, if somebody wants to post a comment to your page, they do that, and then they're told your comment is awaiting approval. And then the administrator gets an email that says, uh, you know, somebody's trying to post your page, click here to okay it. Um, and then you can simply review and okay the post and then it will show up, okay? So now that's how it works if somebody like Joe Blow who doesn't have any permission on your site tries to do it. But the exercise says you're gonna create me as a user a subscriber, which is the lowest permission, which will give me the approval to do that without you having to pre-approve my post. You see the difference? So, so this- I've, I've approved you, so you could make a post right now. Oh, under John and Teacher John? Yes. Okay, so let's try that, John. All right. Um, Now you saw what happened before when I wasn't pre-approved. Oh, it's still awaiting moderation. Um, well, let me see oh, oh right, because I'm a subscriber. But last time it actually came to me when, when we did it, when Bob sent me one, it actually, this time I didn't get it. I haven't gotten it yet. Okay, um, right, you, okay, so going back here, um, if you truly gave me a subscriber role, uh, you, you, what will happen is I should be able to comment without awaiting moderation. Um, I th think that that's the way it should work with some. But, but read down in the subscriber. Oh, it's maybe a contributor. Um, yeah. Nope, cannot publish them. Um, uh, what does it say? I can change it if you want. You want me to change you? Oh, well, yeah, there's a, okay, so let's talk about the section of your dashboard where you can do that. Um, if you go to settings, here, okay, so let me go back. That's right, you have to make the change in the dashboard, and that is in the exercise, I forgot. So, um, oh, wait, um, you're sharing, are you sharing? No, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, but right? I, I have an all users, so okay. I could probably um, change it. Yeah, as it says here, let me pull up the exercise here. Can you see that? I don't I'm on two computers, so that's why I'm Okay, so, but you guys can see this, right? Am I sharing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so in the exercise, I forgot about the last step. Okay, so when I try to post a comment, if you haven't checked comment must be manually approved or not, um, you, what, basically you need to uncheck that to change my role as a subscriber to be able to post without you having to pre-approve it. Um, and this is under settings okay, so discussion. Do you see that? So you're, if- You're now a contributor. Oh, even better. Okay, so, um, but did you, but did you uncheck the- um, I just went in and changed you. Yes, but did you do this? Okay, uh, so, Anne, you want to share your screen and we'll walk through this? Sure. Okay, why don't you share your screen and let's talk about settings discussion. Uh, I can't do it until you stop sharing. Oh, I need it. to stop sharing. I'm sorry. It's, it's hard for me to know. Oh, I see right there. Okay.
So um, you can go to your dash. We can make that window go away. We don't need, yeah, there it is, dashboard. Oh, that's weird. Comment must be manually approved. If anybody wants to ask a question while this is going on, feel free. Um, is this making sense for people? I, it's, I don't see everybody's facial expressions. So here's on some comments here, and I can go in and, and I can open them up here. If I go here. No, no, but no, if you go down to settings. Okay, so settings. And then discussion. Okay. There. Now look at what you've got here. Wow. Mm hmm So you want to take a good look at this when you're going to start enabling comments. So I could, I could uncheck that, right? Exactly. So if you uncheck that, then I can post without you having to approve it. I've made you a contributor though now. Can oh, you? well then that won't matter. But, but, the, but I want you to know where these settings are. And this is under, in the main dashboard settings, and then under that is discussion. So um, this is a place where they kind of bury all this really important stuff in terms of how user permissions work. But I so, could have checked that one instead because I, I approved, like I approved Bob already on a comment. Right, so, so once you do that, then if you have that other box checked, um, if you don't have that box checked that says comment, author must have previously approved comment. Um, well, once he has, okay, yeah, never, I have backwards. But you see how these buttons work comment must be previously approved. So in other words, once you previously approved somebody, you can then allow them to post and not have to do anything more. So I've approved one of Bob's comments. So that means he's now uh, has a previously approved comment. Yeah, and I think it was up here that I found it where this is where the comments come in. Yeah, but you see the, the discussion settings is where you get more, um, this is more generic global for the whole site. Right, so, okay. um, and they're kind of self-explanatory. It's like, do you want to get notified by email every time somebody comments whether or not you have to pre-approve it? You know, so you have different levels of granularity here for your settings. So here's that last one that came in. <laughs> and I can just approve it. <laughs> yeah. so, so now you, if you weren't a subscriber, which I just changed you, it would be. Um, and Well, you can approve it regardless of my permission through that. Yeah, I can approve this one too. Exactly. So Whether or not I'm an editor, subscriber, whatever, you can always approve wow. or yeah. not. So this is where you get a lot of flexibility in WordPress. So, so you had apparently um, sometime when, when I, I did it earlier, you had done that and then you just mm -hmm. did this in class. So I approve yes. both of them now. Okay. So now your page is going to have those comments on it. And you should be able to see that on those pages. And now everyone will see them because um, they're now on your pages. Um, so here is Bob posted something on 2D Universe, I know. See, Bob posted there. He posted a comment. All right. So, um, this, be, this is actually a fairly important aspect of WordPress because um, you really want to have full control over who is going to be posting to your page, right? And so um, understanding users and permissions and how this works is pretty basic. And so um, that's why I just wanted to make sure you all get this right away because um, you do not want to screw up and let open up your pages too much and let the universe post to your pages because believe me if you open it up you will get lots of spam and it will quickly kill your site um, and you really don't want that so um, being familiar with what's under discussion settings I'm sorry settings discussion and also how to create and change the permissions of users is pretty pretty important in WordPress so that was the the uh, point of right of today so I want to make sure you all get that um, so is this, is this process um, still confusing? Is there, are there any questions on what we just did and questions on either how to create a user, how to change the permissions or how to allow comments? I think I'm good. I just Maybe. found something out. Uh-huh. I changed something. Well, let me see, now I have too many windows open. Give me a second here. Um, uh, under 
under discussions, there's a place where it says other comment settings. Uh -huh. And second one down says users must be registered and logged in to comment. Mm -hmm. I did not have that checked. Now I just checked it and I tried leaving a comment from in another browser with just the, you know, the window open. I wasn't on my dashboard. I just had the, uh, right. the website. Act open. Acting like you're not you. I get it. But, but now it's working right. It says, mm -hmm. uh, it says, sorry, you must be logged in to comment. Mm -hmm. I, I just put a fake name and a fake email address and it says, sorry, you must be logged in to comment. Yeah. My guess is that because virtually every, thing we did to post it said you're you look like a bot my guess is that that's coming from some plugin that you've installed because that's not nor like when we saw Anne's, it didn't get that right when i use the same email addresses that i used no, with but yours. i'm saying it's working better now that yeah. now that i checked something saying users must be registered and log in right. the comment which is what i want so okay well if that's what you want you should definitely check that now right. what will happen is if you have your when somebody goes to post a comment it'll tell them that It'll say, you know, you have to be a registered user, and then you will get a message saying, you know, Joe Blow wants to be a registered user. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. So I now I have to check my email to see. Yeah. If this, uh, so, so again, your administrator email address should be correct. Um, uh, any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, let me say a few. Oh, wait, Robin, who had a comment? No, I was just saying, no, I don't have a comment. <laughs> oh, okay. You stop sharing. Um, you can stop sharing. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, oh, um, can you just hold for a second? I'm going to pause. Can I pause the recording? Yes, I can. Oh, never mind. I guess I hung up. Um, so a um, couple of uh, basic housekeeping things. Um, you're going to get an email from me with a link to a Vitea survey. Um, and a Vitea survey is something that all the um, CTE programs ask their students to fill out every semester. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty brief online survey, but it is really, Im <laughs> it is really important for the college that you fill out that survey. Um, hold for a second. Oh, no, I guess they stopped again. Okay, it's gonna yeah. drive me crazy. Um, and the survey um, has to do with the funds that the college gets for um, CTE programs, which is career technical education programs. Digital media is a CTE program. Um, so every digital media student for every class uh, is asked to fill this out, but you only have to fill it out once per semester, regardless of how many classes you have. So if you've already filled out the Vitea survey this semester, you can ignore it. Um, if you haven't already filled it out, then please um, click on the link in the email to take the Vitea survey um, because th it does help with funds for instruction. And so um, uh, we really need uh, the students to fill out that survey. So you'll get that email from me later today. Um, there's another... Um, They've uh, changed some of the um, deadlines for things, and I will summarize that in an email as well. But um, they're basically giving students a lot more flexibility in changing some of their options, whether they want to take something credit no credit, or they want to take something and, uh, again, they can drop it with a, with, that, with a W and then take it again, as opposed to normally they, there would be certain restrictions on retaking classes. So um, actually, I'm reading the thing from my dean right now on all the different options. I'm going to try to keep it simple for you, um, or maybe I'll forward you the whole message so you can have all the information from the dean. But, um, but look for the Vitea survey, um, and please fill that out, because that's kind of important. Um, with that, I think we're going to stop for today. I will post, I will um, process this and upload this to the YouTube channel later. Um, so do the permissions exercise, and then we'll um, go pick it up again on Friday. Uh, any final questions? Are we meeting on Wednesday? I'm sorry, Wednesday. This is Monday. Yeah, we are. Uh, 10 o'clock. And I'll see you all then. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, John. Bye-bye.